If you're working with data in Python, eventually you'll get to a point where you wanna save off that data somewhere as a file. So my question to you is, what file type do you use? If you were to ask me about five years ago, I would have definitely said CSV. While CSVs may be the most common way to save data, there are a lot more efficient and smart ways to save off your data. My name is Rob. I make videos about coding in Python, data science, and machine learning. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the different file formats you can save off data, some of the benefits of each, and do some benchmark testing of speed and file storage size. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, giving the video a like, and following me on Twitch where I stream live coding. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so here we are in a Jupyter Notebook. We're gonna just write some code to get our data together. So we're gonna start by importing pandas, importing numpy, and then we're gonna create our, our data set. I'm gonna paste in here two functions that I wrote in a previous video that if you haven't watched, I encourage you also to watch on efficient Panda data frames. And this will just create some fake data for us when we call get data of a certain size. And we'll have a data frame that we can then test saving and reading from disk. I also have this set D types function that we created in that video. And this helps make our data frame memory efficient by setting and casting the different columns to specific D types. So if I run get data set here with a size of 10,000 and then run a DF info on this, we can see that we have a data frame that's half a megabyte in size. If I do a head on it, we see that it has different columns with uh, various different random variables that we just set up as an example. We're gonna run this on a slightly larger file size that's 1 million rows to really test out the different file types that we're gonna save. So I mentioned this at the beginning, but probably the most common way to save data is a CSV or comma separated values file. If you have a pandas data frame like this, you can write it to CSV by just using to CSV and then writing it out. Now this data frame is fairly large, so it does take some time to write this to disk. And then if I do an ls on this file, we can see that on in disk, it's about 53 megabytes. Similarly, if we wanna read in this data frame, we can do a pd read CSV and read in the test CSV. One thing to know here is when we read back in the file, we see that the data frame now has this unnamed column. That's because when we save the CSV, we need to make sure that we write index equals false if we don't wanna save the index out. Now, if we run the get data set on it and save it off with index equals false, we can see the file size is slightly smaller. And if we read it back in, it doesn't have the index. Similarly, if we had this index as true, we could read in the file with an index column of zero. And this would give us pretty much the same result. But when we're fa saving files to disk, we have a few things we are concerned with. Number one, who's gonna be reading this file? If it's gonna be shared to someone who needs to open it in a program like Excel, maybe CSV is the best way to go. But if we're trying to save for efficiency and for reduced disk space, especially when our data sets get very, very big, CSVs are not gonna be the most ideal. And I'm gonna show you why. To test this, we're gonna run the time it function on this save CSV. And we could see that on seven runs, on average, it's taking 8.8 .8 seconds to save the, this data off. And that's pretty slow. We can do the same time it on the read CSV. And it's faster, but still not very fast, almost half a second to read this file in on average. So just to write in our notes, 46 megabytes, 8.8 .8 seconds to save, 0.5 seconds to read. And actually with the index saved, it's about 53 megabytes. Now, another thing to keep in mind, if you save your file as a CSV, you can open up the file and look at the raw data, which is a benefit. But when the data is read back into pandas, it's going to infer and guess what D types that you have for each column. So to demonstrate it, 
I'm going to run this set D types function on this same data frame. So we're going to get a data frame with 1 million rows. And then we're going to run the set D types on this data frame and run a DF info. Now we can see that we set the D types to be a category for the size an int 16 for the age. And all of this helps save the information in a more efficient way. But when we save this and read it back in as a CSV, all of these types are going to be eliminated. So let's read in the CSV and do a DF info on it. We could see that our category types are now objects. And by default, the integers are read in as an int 64, floats are read in as a float 64. This is not ideal. Now, one way to get around this is just to set the D types as you read in the file. So we would do that like this. We would, when we read in, we would set the D type for instance, for size to be category. Let's split this out. And this is kind of annoying because we actually have to rewrite this metadata of the way we want each column to be stored when we save it and read it. So what's an alternative to this? Now the first and easiest is just to pickle the file. If you used pickle in Python before, it's just a way to take an object, sterilize it and put it as a file on disk. And essentially that's all pandas to pickle function does. So let's see how long it takes to run this using pickle. So it's a lot faster to read and write. You could see it's about 0.8 seconds to write, 0.3 seconds to read. And how big is it? This actual file is 43 megabytes. So not necessarily that much smaller, but it is a lot faster to read and write. We can also test to see if our D types, when we set them, get saved when we write them as pickles. By running our set D types on this, we can see that when running DF info, that we do in fact keep all the different data types that we've set our columns to by writing as a pickle file. So that's definitely an advantage. But there are a lot of even better alternatives to pickle files. And the main one that I love is called Parquet Format. So Parquet file Format, in order to use, you'll have to pip install something first, either pip install PyArrow or pip install fast, fast Parquet. And I already have these installed on my computer, but this is just a reminder, if you don't have these installed, you'll need to pip install these one of these two before you can use it with pandas. But once you do, you can save the file to disk in a much smaller and more efficient way by using the two parquet method. Let's go ahead and test that by running the same time code on it, just with our read and write as parquet files. And let's also call these parquet. So much faster already. It's 0.3 milliseconds to write, 0.08 milliseconds to read. And let's see how big the file is on disk. Only 11 megabytes. So much smaller. It's maintaining the D types of the file and it's uh, a much better way to read and write it. I'm not gonna go into the details of how Parquet formats work, but they're really efficient and you can actually do nice things like when you read in your da data frame. Now we could set up just specific columns that we want to pull in the data frame. So if we only wanted the date and the win, we could do that and we would save memory and time by only pulling in those columns. And believe it or not, this can be really helpful when you have very large data sets. So I'll call that leave reading in specific columns. Now there are some other alternatives to Parquet. Feather is also another popular way to store the data in a faster, more efficient way that also stores the metadata about the columns. So let's go ahead and run this to Feather and read Feather. We'll change the file types to Feathers and we'll call this DF Feather. Now I have read that Feather is supposed to be better for short-term storage while Parquet is better for long-term storage. I tend to prefer Parquet files, but Feather is also a great alternative. We can see here that fe this Feather file wrote in 0.22 seconds, wrote in 0.22 seconds and read in 0.075 seconds. So even fa faster, 
I probably should have wrote these in milliseconds. So Feather is even faster than Parquet file in this situation. Now if we look at this test that Feather file on disk, you can see it's 29 megabytes. So while it was faster to read and write, it's a little bit larger when we save it to disk. Forgot to write up here, but this is 11 megabytes for the Parquet file. So for a little bit of extra time, Parquet file will save you a lot of space on disk with the file format, which can be really important if you have a very large data set. Now there are many other ways you can save the data frame to disk. If we just look at some of the two methods on a pandas data frame, there are a few other ones that we could use. A lot of these would work well if, if you have a small data frame that you want to display, copy to your clipboard, um, don't use Excel files unless you have to, or save it as HTML, HTML or JSON. But for major storage of large data sets, the ones that we covered today are mainly it. Okay, so now what I've done, just so we can compare everything with an even larger data set, we're going to compare CSVs to Pickle to Parquet to Feather. And we're going to do it back to back using the exact same setup where we get our data set and we set the dtypes. We're going to write and read just using the time function so it doesn't have to loop over seven times. And we'll get an idea for the difference in speed and size. Now CSV does take a long time, so I'm probably going to cut this out. Writing for the CSV file is done. It took 39 seconds, which is a long time, and reading it took 2.2 seconds. Let's try with the pickle. 181 milliseconds to save and 23 milliseconds to read. Parquet file is about 512 milliseconds to write and 129 to read. And feather file is 307 milliseconds, 102 milliseconds to read. And let's just ls all of these files. So we can see their file sizes and you can see that the parquet file is the most compressed. Pickle file is the largest of the compressed file types and CSVs are just massive compared to everything else. So the big takeaway is you have a lot of different options of how you want to save your data to disk and CSVs are not necessarily the best, especially when your data set gets very large. Consider using Parquet files if you're saving for long storage and you want to optimize for space. Feather files if you want to optimize for speed. And Pickle files work just fine as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. Please let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about something specific in the future and I'll try my best to do that. Until next time.